Okay, Elvis. Here we go. Listen, this is what was left. Within minutes of Sissy returning with a full bucket from the kitchen, they packed Penny's every orifice with as much salt as if it were stuffing, and he was the world's first gangbanger-shaped Thanksgiving turkey. No sooner had they finished than they wrapped him in the black shower curtain. With the help of a roll of duct tape, Samuel sealed the package in three broad stripes of silver. That should hold him for a bit, Buckley croaked, holding back the pain. Still, his voice betrayed him, drawing the stares of both Sissy and Samuel. Three times during the operation, Maggie's had bored through his skin. Once on his thigh, once in his left armpit, and once under his left breast. Each time he'd bit his lip, the pain mounting, and each time he'd successfully managed to corral the damn things before the others noticed. <laughs> All the while holding them as they tried to eat through his hand, only by shaking them like caught flies was he able to stun them and keep them from bleeding him to death. Still, he kept up the front, and the others were none the wiser. He told Samuel to keep an eye on the body, very aware of the danger that Maggie's in his hand posed to the rest of the people. Buckley hurried back into the kitchen, looking for little Rashad. For all he knew, the kid had done what a thousand scientists had been a unable to do and figured out a way to save the world. Even now, little Rashad plucked scales with his trumpet in the kitchen. Maybe, just maybe, who knew? As Buckley passed through the living room, he glanced at Grandma Riggs. The long finger of her left hand shot out and pinned him from where she sat as she spoke in her sing-song crack rhyme. Icky bicky soda cracker, icky bicky boo, icky bicky soda cracker, out goes you! What? Icky bicky soda cracker, out goes you! He glared at her for several long moments as, he, as she cackled more of the icky bicky nonsense. But was it? Her patty cake rhyme had saved them. She'd foretold the death of Lashana and Sally. He remembered other rhymes, some meaningless and some that, in retrospect, could mean something. Did she have a gift, or was it just coincidence? Or crack? Whatever was going on, she pegged him. But how? She was just a blind woman with a, she was just a blind woman with a drug habit. What made her so special? But as he thought about it, he glimpsed a possible answer. Good night. You're welcome. If a person lost one of their senses. It was known that the others would improve to compensate for the loss. She'd smelled his infection just like he'd smelled the sex on McHenry and Gert. Damn it all. It can make a soda cracker, out goes you! Was it true? Could he possibly be next? Was he the next one out the door? As if to answer him, he felt another piercing point of pain upon his right kneecap. Buckley shook his leg violently until the Maggie fell to the floor. There he stomped on it, squishing it to the floor with his heavy soled boots. Yeah. He was next, all right. Fucked he was. Fucked real good. Excuse me. Buckley turned to find Samuel and Sissy lugging the wrapped body from the bathroom. We couldn't wait, Sissy said. They dropped the long parcel by the front door. That should hold him a bit. Buckley couldn't help but admire how far Samuel had come. He placed his hand on the boy's shoulder. Let's hope so, son. Let's hope so. But Samuel shrugged away. What's wrong, Samuel? Fuck that. It's only a matter of time before we all die. Stop daddy and me. I don't know about that. I mean, what? Like we'll survive? Like we're going to get out of this? Like there's some sitcom solution? We could. Why the fuck not? Grandma Riggs crowed from the living room. No, 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 no. Everyone turned and watched as Grandma Riggs raised her bony arm to point a skeletal finger at Buckley. After a moment of panic, he turned to Samuel and Sissy, a grin squeezing through his shame as he tried to redirect their attention. So, hey, what's for lunch? Uh, are you hungry, Samuel? But Grandma Riggs wouldn't be ignored. It can make a soda cracker! It can make a boo! It can make a soda cracker! Out goes you! Feeling like a child, he ignored her as best he could and sought to propel Samuel into the kitchen. It can make a soda cracker! Out goes you! Jerking his elbow away, Samuel frowned, glancing back and forth from, from Grandma Riggs to Buckley. What's she talking about now? I don't know. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Mr. King of Garbage Lies. You know what I mean, Mr. Maggie Man. What? What? As if in slow motion, Buckley watched his sissy left away from him, stumbling, and sprawled up to the floor in the hallway. Samuel lunged for the shotgun, leaning against the door jamb, lat latching onto it microseconds before Buckley. Samuel brought the gun level as time resumed. She's talking about you, isn't she? Me? Yes, you. You're Ichabic Soda Cracker, aren't you? I am not Ichabic Soda Cracker. You were telling us you weren't fucked, and here you are, Ichabic Soda Cracker. How the fuck could you? What the hell are you talking about? I, it's, it's nothing. I, I'm not... Hey, what's 
with all this noise, McHenry said, stomping out of the bedroom. They got it. The Maggie's got a damski. Icky back a soda cracker, icky back a boo, icky back a soda cracker, out goes you! Buckley stomped in frustration. It wasn't fair. After all he'd done, he was going to end this way. There had to be a way. There had to be a chance. He thought of a dozen things to say, but all he could do was scream at the top of his lungs, I am not Ica Pick a Soda Cracker! The apartment fell silent as everyone stared at Buckley. Even the trumpet playing stopped. In a quiet voice, just loud enough for the others to hear, Buckley repeated the words he'd only wished were true. I am not Ica Pick a Soda Cracker. Little Rashad ran into the room carrying the glass jar. Smoke rose from the open top. A gray sludge coated the bottom. Unlike the others in the room, his smile was broad and wide. I got it, Mr. Adamski. I killed your Maggie. I figured it all out for you. God was fucking with him. That's what it was. This was one great game of let's fuck with Buckley Adamski. He rolled his eyes and hung his head. Aren't you happy, Mr. Adamski? I found the secret. Aren't you happy? Sure, kid. He closed his eyes as Samuel cocked the shotgun. I'm fucking thrilled. See? See? I can't wait to find out what happens next. Can you?